Hey, it's Cliff, and today I'm gonna walk you step by step on how to stake your Corium with Ledger Live. Now, it's a very easy process. You guys are gonna be able to get through this fine, but if you do have any questions, you can comment down below. I'm finding that my community is really helpful in getting people to stake their Corium or just with any issues with Corium or Sologenic in general. So just to start this out, you're gonna need your Ledger device. This could be any kind of ledger that you have. If you have a, a Nano, you have the S, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but it will need to be connected to Ledger Live. I'm gonna assume that you've already done that and your ledger is set up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and get into Ledger Live and I can show you what needs to be done. Okay, so now that we're in the Ledger Live software, you're just gonna go up to the left side and you're gonna click Accounts. Under the account page, if you go up to the top right, you'll see add account. So now you're going to get a pop up that says add accounts. All right, so select here. So you're just going to click in that box and type core. Corium should pop up. You select it, hit continue. Now, this is where you're going to need your ledger device. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the cable for that. Plug it in. I'm going to plug the USB into my computer. And then as you can see on the screen, it's asking me to unlock my device. So I'm going to put in my pin code that I created when I set up my ledger device. Perfect. Now it's telling me to open the Cosmo app. So I'm going to go ahead and select Cosmos on my ledger. Synchronizing my device pulling up Corium and I'm going to just call this account Corium2 and add it to my ledger device and then hit done. So now I have added a Corium wallet to this device. So back on this ledger live page, we're going to go and we're going to select our Corium wallet and then we're going to hit receive. We're going to continue. Now, after a certain amount of time, you may need to go back and enter your pin in your ledger device just to get it to unlock again. But as you can see, this is the new wallet that I've created. I'm just gonna hit this and copy the address. So this is the part that trips up a lot of people. I have a website pulled up that I will paste in the description. It's just the bridge used by Sologenic. So what trips people up is people think they have their core in their Sologenic wallet, but, and they do actually, they have their core, but their core is placed on the XRPL. So what you need to do to stake your Corium is to transfer that core from the XRPL to Corium. So what you're gonna do with this web page, you're going to obviously connect your Sologenic wallet to the Sologenic Dex. I have videos on how to do that if you need to figure that out as well, but for this video, I'm just gonna run through it really quickly. So as you can see here, it's telling you from the XRPL to Corium. You're going to enter the amount that you wanna transfer from your Sologenic wallet, and it'll tell you what's available right here. Now you're going to paste that wallet address right here that we just created. You're gonna hit confirm, and that will transfer your tokens from the XRPL to the Corium mainnet. Okay, so moving back into Ledger Live, I have gone back to accounts and I pulled up that wallet that we just created. So here's what we have. I also funded 20 bucks in this wallet just to use as a demonstration to see what we're doing. But you can see here's the amount of core that you have and it'll show you a chart depending on the fluctuation of the price. But under that is delegations. So what you're going to do is click this little box, earn rewards. That's gonna give you this little prompt that tells you that you keep ownership of your delegated assets. You can delegate using your Ledger device. Obviously you're in this window delegating with Ledger and that your assets will be available seven days after undelegation. So there is a unbonding period if you do want to pull your crypto out of being staked. It is seven days, so kind of factor that in if you're thinking that maybe you wanna sell at some point in your timeline. But anyway, you're going to click continue and then it's going to bring up this box that says delegate. So this is where you're choosing your validator. You can hit show all and it'll tell you all the different validators that you're going to be able to choose. 
from. Now in this video, I'm not going to tell you which validator you should be choosing. That is completely up to you, but I am going to give you some things to think about when you are choosing your validator. So what I have here is a page on the Corium website and I'll paste it down below. And it's just giving you a list of the validators that you can choose from and it'll give you a bit more stats on the different validators. So as you can see here, the number one validator is BitTrue. They have 10.51% of the voting power. And that's really what you're doing when you're contributing to these validators. The validators will have a certain amount of Corium and that kind of shows their voting power within these different proposals. So the idea of being decentralized is that not one validator has completely control of the democracy, if you will, of the Corium tokenomics. So as you can see, BitTrue here has 10% of the voting power. So they are number one, followed by Zen Lounge, which is a close 9%, not quite there, but pretty much let's just say 9%. So one of the main factors that people have when it comes to choosing a validator is how much money they're actually going to make from their stake. So that comes down to the commission that the validator is going to take from you when it comes to the money that you're actually getting from the stake. So as you look here, BitTrue charges 1%. Commission, you can see Zen Lounge is in a close second. And if you scroll down to number three, you can see Cosmo Station charges 5% commission of your stake. Factor number one is probably commission when it comes to choosing your validator, but there are more things that you actually wanna look at when it comes to actually selecting these validators. So let me pull up BitTrue. So probably the second thing you wanna look at when you go into these validators is their last 100 blocks, or in general, just as far back as you can go. So these validators are processing transactions and when the, they fail to actually process the transactions, they get slashed. And what a slash is, is pretty much a fee. It's saying, hey, this validator, these nodes are not doing what they're supposed to do. So now we need to punish them for not doing what they actually were supposed to do. So as you can see here, BitTrue is green all the way across the board. So that means that their uptime when it comes to being a validator is actually really good. And that means the odds of them being slashed is probably pretty small, which means more money in your pocket because they're not getting penalized. Factor number three I would look at when it comes to selecting a validator is the actual percentage of their voting power. So the goal of this is to not have one validator control the entire voting power. So we want to kind of spread our quorum out. So when I'm looking at BitTrue and you can see that they control 10% of the vote, that's kind of unreasonable or really it's 10 percent's not bad i would say but we want to kind of maybe go down and look at some of these like one percent guys now seeing that they have a five percent commission would i select citadel one probably not but you know it, there's pros and cons you kind of want to weigh your options and see what is the best validator for you so your perfect validator would have low commission low voting power and a really great uptime Another thing I want you to consider when you're selecting your validator is the community involved in that validator. So when you're looking at BitTrue, BitTrue is a big exchange. That means that maybe they don't represent the ideals that you actually want to go into Corium. So when it comes to a proposal, maybe they don't vote the way that you want them to vote. But when you scroll down and you go to Zen Lounge, Zen Lounge has a pretty big community and you can, they have a Discord that you can go to and you can see, am I meshing well with these people? Are they gonna vote in my interest? And should I be putting my money there? And that's not to say that BitTrue has a bad community. I'm not actually aware of it myself. But when it comes to your community, you wanna put your money with like-minded people that are actually going to vote on the proposals that you agree with. Let me show you what something like that looks like. So if you go over to the left-hand side, you can select on proposals here. So this will show you some of the proposals that passed and failed. So let's just take number five. There was a Corium version two upgrade and you were definitely for this. You wanted this upgrade to pass. You wanna be with a validator that supports that decision. All right, so let's flip back over to Ledger Live and stick our Corium. Now for this demonstration, I'm just gonna pick the number one bit true. I'm not telling you to select that. I am just doing this for a demonstration. Again, go through and select the right validator that is for you, for your money. So I have BitTrue selected, as you can see. I'm gonna hit continue. I'm just gonna select this little button here that says use max for the $20 or so that I threw in here. And as you can see, it's saying that you need a balance left over for fees when it comes to delegating to your validator. So as you can see down here, this is your 
network fee, it's not even a penny. It's very small amount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the, what is it, 185 that I have here and just make that even. So 185, type that in. That's gonna cover my network fees. And then I'm gonna hit continue. It's telling me that my device is locked. So once again, I gotta type in my pin. Then I'll hit retry. And so this is the transaction that's actually going to go through. So you're gonna take your ledger device and review it. Scroll all the way to the right until you get to approve and then approve the transaction on your device. And as you can see, it says you have successfully delegated your assets and that's all there is to it. You have delegated your Corium and you can now begin to get passive income from your Corium. So what you're gonna monitor to actually see if you have money coming in is you're gonna go back to that wallet and you can see your delegations. This is where we delegated to BitTrue. We have 185 cores staked. And then you have your rewards down here, which is the actual amount of money that you're gaining from being staked. So when it comes to actually claiming your rewards, all you need to do is go here and select claim rewards. And that'll put it back into your wallet or you can compound into the same validator or maybe choose a different validator. And that's it. That's all you got to do to delegate your Corium and start earning passive income. If you have any questions, again, please leave them down below in the comments and I'll be sure to help you out the best I can. As always, thank you for watching.